Hello brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, welcome to part two of how are we supposed to react slash respond to the lost world, okay? How are we to react, respond to the lost world? And in part one we talked about our first response, our first heartfelt desire should be to witness for Jesus Christ by the life that you're living, the life that you're living, new creature in Christ Jesus, by the life that you're living, and by your words. Okay, your testimony is going to be based off the life that you live for Jesus Christ and your words, and they need to line up. They need to line up. But in this part, we're going to move on. Okay, you've, you've witnessed to them. They want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. At this point, how do we react and respond to the lost world? So the next topic will be people who reject the true gospel. Turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. A lot of verses in this chapter. Verse 43. Okay. And remember, I'm going to be reading my notes <laughs> because I have things highlighted in my notes that I want to talk to you about. But I will be trying to turn to the scriptures to give you time to turn to the scriptures too. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Brothers and sisters of Christ, when someone rejects the gospel, the true plan of salvation, they are the enemies of Christ. Okay. The Bible talks about how the Hebrews, they're enemies for your sakes, for the gospel's sake, but they're beloved for the Father's sake because they're chosen people. God's not done with them yet. But you've got to understand that anybody who rejects the true plan of salvation is labeled the enemy. That's just the way it is. Right? When you try to witness to family members, people at work, uh, neighbors, okay, people around you, when they reject Jesus Christ from that point on, they're always going to try to pull you away from the Lord and try to get you to doubt the Word of God and to get you to change your mind. Because now they're being, now how we're part of the ministry of reconciliation, they are now part of Satan's ministry of preventing reconciliation. Okay. But we've been told, have you heard that it shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. That's hard. Brothers and sisters of Christ, in this life, when we preach the gospel to family members and friends and neighbors and co-workers, and they want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, we're not to curse them. Okay? We're not to, to hate them. We're to do good to them. You say, this is Old Testament. We're going to start this. It's true. This is Old Testament. But is this reiterated in the New Testament? Get ahead of myself. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and, and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if we love them which love you, what reward have you? Have ye? Brothers and Christ, you know what one of the rewards I believe is going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? One of those rewards, not necessarily a crown reward, but a reward is going to be how did you treat the lost world? Did you reward evil for evil? Did you start hating the lost world to the point where you got bitterness in your heart that you even refused to preach the gospel to them? I have brothers in Christ that were emailing me and talking to me about their situation, their stress, and the jobs that they have, the secular jobs. And they get so bent out of shape. And we're going to get to what you're supposed to, what your attitude should be. Yes, it's stressful. Yes, it's, it's, it's vexing being around the lost world. I pray for you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that have secular jobs and have to be around the lost world more than I do. Um, and I pray for you. But remember, what reward have you? If you start falling into hate and bitterness towards them with how you act, with your words, and with your actions, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay. People who reject the true gospel, you try to preach the gospel to them, now they don't want anything to do with the gospel. Now what do you do? You be good to them, according to the scriptures. You do right by them, according to the scriptures. If one of my neighbors needed help, I'd help them. 
I've told a lot of my neighbors the gospel. I've given them gospel tracts. I've given them these gospel tracts that a brother in Christ up in Canada helped me make. And I've given some of them, a lot of my neighbors, I gave them, uh, Brother JT made this, How to Be Saved and Know It. Okay. A lot of them that came out of false religions. This is a great book for mainly for those that came out of false religions or false Christians, fake Christians. Uh, it's a great book. Okay. Now, they want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So at this point, I had the attitude that I want nothing to do with you. I heard a brother in ministry, and this is very shocking. I heard a brother in ministry say that if you want my love, my love starts for the lost world. My love starts for you at the cross. No, you're not God. Okay, I just want to put that out. You're not God. Why are you acting like God? You know who you are. Okay, our love starts, period. When we get saved, God tells us we're to love the world, lost world. And we love the lost world by preaching the truth to them. We love the lost world by doing right by them. We don't lie to them. We don't steal from them. We don't curse them. We don't call them names. We don't indulge in backbiting and whispering. Okay? We are set apart from the world. We're supposed to be a light to them. We're supposed to do right by them. Okay? When you try to say that, make that statement, but my love for them is at the cross, you're acting like you're God. And it goes against the scriptures. Okay? Your love for them is supposed to be present tense. Even if they reject Jesus Christ, you're still supposed to have love for them. How you treat them. You say, well, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. Turn to Romans 12, 19. How do we treat the lost world? Twelve verse nine, nineteen. Here, let's start with verse seventeen. We'll start in verse seventeen. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters. I've heard stories from brethren that got saved because they have testimonies where they were, when they were lost, they were very evil and wicked and and treated brethren, Bible believing, God fearing men and women, like junk. They were wicked and evil towards them, but they never acted the same way back to them. And they're like, that shocked them. They have something I want. No matter how bad I treat them, they have peace and joy. No matter how bad I treat them, I'm getting ahead of myself, they keep giving God the glory. God's not doing that to them. I'm doing that to them. Why are they giving Him the glory? And they see something in them and say, I want what they have. I want what they have. Okay? Now, Matthew 5.43 tells us how we're supposed to treat the enemy, the lost world. How are we supposed to treat the enemy? Some people are forgetting that. They're like, I wish this guy would die and go to hell. I wish that guy would die and go to hell. We're not supposed to have that attitude, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not supposed to have that attitude. We pray that if that guy is really wicked and he's doing a lot of harm to the cause of Christ, to us, Bible believers, the ministry of reconciliation, if they're doing a lot of harm, God, do, do something to distract them. God, do something to stop them. Absolutely. And if God chooses to kill them, so be it. Then that's what God chose to do. But we're not supposed to have the attitude, kill them and send them to hell, God. Kill them and send them to hell. Verse 17. Romans 12, 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. I pray and I, I hope that... Like I said, I pray in the last study we talked about, part one, I was like, I'm thankful that Brother Brian didn't have that attitude towards when I got saved. I'm not going to preach the gospel to anybody. You, you guys can all just go to hell. I'm very grateful that he did, when he was in a standing position that, in King James Video Ministries that he didn't have that attitude. Recompense to no man evil for evil. How do we treat the lost world that reject the gospel? Uh, you be good to them. You don't recompense evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of saved brethren. Oh, no, no, no. It says all men. Honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. I live peaceably among my neighbors. People, well, that's because you don't live a life of Christ. No, I don't hang out with my neighbors. I've been invited over to like barbecues and 
dinners and with sa uh, satanic style music and alcohol and everything, and I turn them down. But they, but I live peaceably with them. Why? Because if they need help, I'm here to help. I still witness to them. But I'll wait for that door to open up. But I'm here to help. I need help moving this furniture. I'll be right there. If, they, if you had a neighbor that needed food, you give them food. If they need clothes, you give them clothes. Okay, you do good to them. Right? If it all be possible in you, live peaceably with all men. Right now what gets me is, is we're having a hard time in the body of Christ in these last days living peaceably. Why? Because we're all, all of the same mind and all, all of us have the same judgment. Right now in the body of Christ, we'll get to this in another study, the number one thing killing, that's hurting the body of Christ is being a respecter of persons. You start looking at the man behind the camera and start holding that man as the final authority and not the Word of God. We have a hard time living peacefully among ourselves. But we're also told to live peacefully among all men. That includes brothers and sisters in Christ and the lost world. All right? And here's where we get into it. Verse 19. Dearly beloved... Avenge not yourselves. Okay. Avenge not yourselves. Lord, that man there, he's a, such a wicked man, a servant of Satan. Kill him and send him to hell. You're trying to avenge yourselves. The Bible says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. I will repay, saith the Lord. Lord, I give them to you. Uh, the Jesuit order, the Catholic Church. Lord, I give them to you. You deal with them. Lord, distract them. Keep them off our backs. Lord, allow us to continue in the ministry. But Lord, I give them to you. That's the proper attitude we're supposed to have, brothers and sisters of Christ. We're not supposed to get so angry, so frustrated, so bent out of shape that we start acting like we're God and we're sending people to hell. Go to hell! That's not what we're supposed to be about, brothers and Christ. Vengeance is mine. I will pay. When you're, and not just with the Jesuit order, lost people that you have to work with, brothers, the brothers in Christ out there that was talking about how he struggles and it's hard, give, it, give them to the Lord. Continue to do the work. Do the, your best to live peaceably with them. But give them to the Lord. He will repay, saith the Lord. Remember what the Bible says, they that are without God judges. Those that within we judge, we judge among the body of Christ. And when you see the wicked world doing their bad things, you get, leave them out. You don't fellowship with them. You leave them out of your fellowship. Why? Because God will judge them. God will take care of the people in this world. Do you think God doesn't know what's going on in this world? Yes, He does. He's got everything under control. Nothing's happening that He doesn't allow to happen or want to happen. There's two, that's two things. He gave mankind free will. So there's times that He can allow things to happen. And there's times that he wants things to happen. Right? If he didn't want something to happen at all, it wouldn't happen at all. He'd stop that person from doing it. He's in charge. Don't forget that, brother and Christ. God is in charge. Verse 20. Therefore, this is New Testament. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. You're being a light to him with your attitude and your actions. A light for Jesus Christ. You're heaping coals of fire on his head. This Christian, this Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman, is being nice to me and helping me even though I reject Jesus Christ, even though I've treated them poorly, they're treating me right. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how you can be a light to the world. And it's supposed to be a light to the world. Verse 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I remember talking to a brother in Christ, he mistaken this for saying, well, you overcome evil with the gospel. That's not what this is talking about. You tried preaching the gospel to them, they don't want anything to do with the gospel, now you're to be a living testimony, a living testimony with the life that you're living and how you treat them. And you're to overcome evil in your life, because they're being evil to you, trying to get you to have an evil response back. 
Remember we just read before that, recompense no man evil for evil. That's their goal. That's what the, they're servants of Satan. They're going to treat you like evil and wicked and wrong, and they want you to do the same thing back. That's what they're trying to provoke. You're to overcome evil in your life, brother and sister Christ, with good. Romans 12, 19. Go back to 12, 19. No, no, that's what we just read. Romans 8, I'm sorry. All right. You're to overcome evil with good. You're not supposed to be evil yourself. Now, what about Paul? Paul set an example. Acts 26, 16. Paul in Acts 26, 16. This is, um, they're in prison. I'm sorry, no, this is Paul. This is what God's taught in Paul, verse 16. But rise and stand up upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Deliver thee from the people, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. How can you lead someone to the light if, you're, if you have nothing but darkness? If you're rendering evil for evil. It says, verse 21, we've got to keep going, I'm sorry, no. Uh, verse 21 in Romans 12, 19. But overcome evil with good. You're to turn them from darkness to light. How can you turn them from darkness to light if you're acting like the darkness? Okay, Paul was told uh, you need to turn them to the light. Romans 2, 19. You don't have to turn there, but we've got a few verses real quick. Romans 2, 19. And thou art confident that thou... Thyself are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a guiding light. And if you're recompensing evil for evil, in other words, another way to say it, Brother Scott, if you look like the world, act like the world, how are you supposed to lead anybody to Christ? You can't. You'll lose your testimony. People won't take you seriously. And they shouldn't. If you can't be set apart from this world, and you get so wrapped up into culture and heritage and looking like the world, acting like the world, laughing at the world's jokes, they're not going to take you seriously. You're going to either create a false convert, because they think that's what true Christianity is, and it isn't, or you're going to turn them away from true Christianity because you claim to be true Christian. All right. You are supposed to live a life of Christ. How do we treat the lost worlds, those who reject the true gospel? You're to do good to them. You're supposed to live peacefully among them. Romans 13, 12. We're going to talk about this light some more. Not rendering evil for evil. Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You know how the Bible says we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God? The whole armor of God. If you've taken off the helmet for a hope of salvation, we talked about this, there's brethren out there that have turned their back on living a life of Christ every day by looking to, for Jesus to come back any day now and call us home by the life that you're living, the rest of the armor doesn't do any good. If you take if so much as put down one piece of armor, what's it going to do? It's going to lead to you taking off all the armor eventually. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. But it says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, the old man. We're supposed to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
how the lost world spits on you, kicks you, beats you, whips you, uh, puts you in prison, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, puts you in prison and everything, you're supposed to praise God. That's that attitude that we've lost, brothers of Christ. When's the last time when good things are happening, we can praise God? Praise the Lord! But when bad things are happening, where's the praise of God? Where are you praising the Lord? And thanking the Lord and giving glory. And God's supposed to give God glory in all things, and we're supposed to thank God in all things. That's the good and the bad. Okay. We are not supposed to let the lost world change us because the lost world is always going to be trying to grab us and bring us back to acting like the old man and not being the new creature in Christ Jesus, not being an ambassador. They don't want you to be a good ambassador for Jesus Christ. A good ambassador for Jesus Christ doesn't render evil for evil. They do good. If there's a lost person that rejects Jesus Christ, that spits in their face and they're starving, you give them food. They don't have clothes, their shirt rips, and they don't have a shirt, give them another shirt. You're going to do good to them that hate you, that despise you, and deceitfully use you. You're going to do good to them. You're to be a light. Okay. Cast off the works of darkness. The old man would have rendered evil for evil, but the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus, were not to do that. Ephesians 5.1 See, the people at work, they're really mean, they're really rude, they're really crass. I don't want to be around them. I understand that, brother and sister Christ. I do. Being vexed by the lost world. But do your best to remember that when they're, being, they're acting the way they are, start singing a hymn in your head. Start quoting some scriptures in your head. Start praying in your head, in your heart. Start praying to the Lord quietly as you're doing your work. Remember that if they're, they're treating you awful because you're a Christian, not because you're, if you're rendering evil for evil and they're treating you bad, that's on you. You're not suffering for Jesus Christ. You're suffering because you're doing the wrong thing. But if you're doing the right thing and you're facing suffering because you're living for the Lord and doing things His way, you give God glory for it. Ephesians 5.1 Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness well, that, that, this only applies to how we treat brothers in Christ. No. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. They yell at you and call you names. You don't turn around and call them names. One of the biggest things that I think really hurt a brother in Christ was that he started becoming very sarcastic. I was always this way. No, he wasn't. He started becoming very, very sarcastic and mocking and putting down people. What does the Bible say? Nor foolish talking. That's what the lost world does. We're not supposed to do that. They call you names, you don't call them names. They put you down, you don't put them down. They spit at, they spit at you, you don't spit at them. Nor jesting, which, is, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Once again, the Bible is really crystal clear on how we're supposed to react. We are not supposed to let the lost world pull us back down and get us to resurrect the old man and try to talk us by beating us down. Sometimes they try to talk us into going back to the old man by putting you down and making your life miserable. And you're going, oh, my life is so miserable and so down. No, you're supposed to be praising the Lord. You're supposed to be turning to the Lord and He will give you peace and joy through whatever suffering you go through. He'll give you peace and joy. For this know that no whoremonger nor unclean person, rendering evil for evil, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. That spiritual, all this stuff that's mentioned here will hinder your spiritual walk with the Lord. And I've seen it in brethren, especially the covetous man. The Bible says covetousness, which is idolatry. 
Is that not going around a lot today? Absolutely. Idolatry. Idol worship. I mean, what's it going to do? It's going to get in the way of your spiritual walk with the Lord. If you start recompensing to the lost world all this evil, I know some of it's sin, but like I said, the lost world's going to keep beating you down and try to make you miserable so that you'll turn your back on God's word and go back to the old man where you were happy, supposedly happy, but it was false happiness. It was a false, it was a, a false joy. It wasn't true joy. It wasn't true peace. You've found that now that you're saved, brothers and sisters of Christ, but you didn't have it before, but sometimes you'll get the whispering by the flesh or by the lost world, oh, you were much happier before, and you were much fun, more fun before to be around and everything. And their goal is to beat you down, beat you down, and get you to turn your back on Jesus Christ and His Word. And some brothers, some of you brothers and sisters of Christ, have done it. You have turned your back on the Lord and His Word. And I'm here to try to tell you to repent and get back on the narrow path, get back to serving the Lord, get back to that standing position. Right. Six, let no man deceive you with vain words. Vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Oh, come on. It's not that big of a deal. You can go back to the old man. No. We can't. Or we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to try to resurrect the old man. No matter what they do to you, what they say to you, no matter what the peer pressure is, you're not to go back to being a child of disobedience. That lost man. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Be not, be not ye therefore partakers with them. You don't render evil for evil. You don't start indulging and acting like them. I've got a brother in Christ that was a mentor that he's acting like the lost world. He's coming back and, and, and uh, whispering and bite, backbiting, name calling. Um, he... Uh, He's using the same arguments as the lost world, vain words, straw man arguments. I could go on and on and on about it, but the thing is, is you're not supposed to become like the lost world. You're not supposed to act like the lost world, and that's their whole goal is to beat you down, brother, sister, Christ. Be therefore not partakers with them. Be ye separate. Oh no, culture's okay, and, and um, you know... Uh, heritage and everything. This is our heritage. I said that in the first part of the study. This Bible right here is our heritage. I am now adopted in to the Jewish people. I am now a child of God. Now are we the sons of God. I'm part of the priesthood of the believer now. This is my heritage. This is my life. This tells me how to live. This tells me what to do and what not to do. My culture culture, which is traditions of men, rudiments of the world that I had before I got saved, bye-bye. I'm adopted into a new family. This is how I'm going to act. This is how I'm going to live for the Lord every day. Be not partakers with them. There's a big push to the people that get saved, new creature in Christ Jesus, there's a big push to go back to the old man. Oh no, you can still you know, have the world and be a Christian. You can have the world and be a Christian. No, you can't. No, you cannot. Verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness. Ye were sometimes darkness. The old man. But now are ye light in the world. The poster here says, If any man be in Christ, old things are passed away. And then the bottom part says, All things have become new. And I'm using this to block the light, so it keeps it dark enough in here that I can use my own lighting to do videos. I want something there, but I want something that's biblical, something that I can point out from time to time with studies. And that's what that is. Okay. But ye therefore, for ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the world. You can't be the light in the world if you start rendering evil for evil. If you start acting like the world and looking like the world and start falling into the trap of uh, the drug of, of, of um, culture, the, the culture drug, um, and going against the word of God. You're supposed to follow the Word of God and be a light to the world. And the, God, the Word of God says you're to be nice to the lost world. You're to do good to them. doesn't matter how they treat us. We're to do good to them. In doing so, we heap coals of fire on their head. If they, in, the, in the end, if they still reject Jesus Christ, even though we've shown been a light to them, we preach the gospel to them, we've been a light to them with the life that we live, if they wind up dying and going to hell... Their damnation is just. 
The Bible says whose damnation is just. But we're supposed to do our part, brothers and sisters of Christ. But now ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk? It's an action. Not just words, but in your deeds, how you live your life. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Goodness, righteousness, doing right in the God's eyes, living right in God's eyes. Goodness and truth. My life is based off of this book now. It's not based off of culture. It's not based off traditions of men, rudiments of the world, okay? philosophy. This is what our life is supposed to be based off of. Truth. Proving what is that acceptable, what is acceptable unto the Lord. And having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I said before, when, the law, when neighbors, lost neighbors, invite me over to do their parties and everything, I tell them I, I, I can't come over. Well, it's not a big deal. Why isn't it? I'm sorry, but I, I, drunkenness is a sin, and I, I'm not into fleshly music that elevates the flesh. I'm sorry. that It's a sin in God's eyes. You reprove them. I, I'm polite about it. I'm respectful about it. I don't tell them, you need to stop doing it. I tell them that God showed me the truth, and I ain't doing it. I don't want it in my life. I don't want that around me. Okay? And it says fellowship. Have no fellowship. That means we have to ignore the lost. No, fellowship. What's true fellowship? You're praying together. You don't pray with the lost world. Okay? You do Bible studies. You talk about the Word of God together. You don't do that with the lost world other than to preach the gospel to them. But you don't do Bible studies with the lost world. Okay? You don't pray with the lost world. You don't do Bible studies with the lost world. You don't, you don't correct the lost world as far as you reprove them at their sin to let them know that they are sinners, but you don't correct them the way you do a brother in Christ. I go to a brother in Christ and say, you need to stop doing this. The Bible says that what you're doing there is a sin. With the lost world, I say, the Bible says that all have come sh fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. That stuff you're doing in your life, the Bible calls that sin. And because of that sin, you're going to hell. You notice I'm not telling them to quit that sin. I'm showing them that, that sin, that's what they're doing is sin. But when you fellowship with brothers and sisters of Christ, you correct them through the Word of God about, on their sin. And you command them by the Word of God, you need to give up that sin. And you need to quit doing that sin. When's the last time you read your Bible? Well, it's been a few weeks. You get on to a brother in Christ. That's fellowship with the brother in Christ. Holding them accountable to the Word of God, doing Bible studies, praying. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about our faults, telling our faults one to another, so that we have things, the prayer requests, to pray for you and everything. We're to encourage the brethren, exhort the brethren. That's fellowship. What people mistaken for fellowship in these Bible buildings is social hour. It's social. It's time for us to just talk and hang out and we talk about the world and the ways of the world. That's just social hour. That's not fellowship. Okay? Can you socialize with the lost world? I talk. I don't just go hang out to hang out with my lost neighbors. But when I come across a lost neighbor, when I go for my walks, and I do a lot of walks, I sit there and I'll talk to them. How are you doing? How's, life, how's your life going? And then you learn things about them. How's your garden going? How, you know, how's your daughter doing? How's your children doing? And you talk with them. You're not fellowshipping with them. You can talk to them. It's okay to talk with the lost world, brothers and Christ. When you get to a person that keeps telling you, hey, you know, it's okay to play video games, it's okay to play video games. If you're like me and you're addicted to video games, and no, no Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian, should be playing video games. They should, you need to get them out of your life. You might have to stay away from some lost people that will try to tempt you to fall back into sin. Or not fall back into it. To choose to sin. To choose uh, to turn your back on the truth. There might be some situations, and that's between you and the Lord and His Word, and you can get advice from me, you can get advice from other brothers and sisters in Christ that have gone through it, where you have to get, put some people out of your life, period, Saved or lost, because they're indulging in a sin that you can't have around you. 
I already did a study on this. Is sin justification to break fellowship? Yes, it is. But that goes for the lost world too. I understand that there's going to be people out there that you can say, I can't have anything to do with you. You're just that, you're so wicked. And the, the sins that you're promoting are sins I gave up for the Lord and had an addiction to in my past. But for the most part, in casual walking around with the neighbors, saying, hey, how was your day? And if a door opens, tell them about Jesus again. doesn't matter how many times you do it. You keep telling them about Jesus as long as a door opens. But if the door's closed, you just ask them how your day was. How was your day? This says, having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. The works of darkness. Like I said, getting invited to a neighbor's house that's throwing a big party and has satanic style music. People are getting drunk. Um, you know, you have no, I, I won't have any, uh, with the unfruitful works of darkness, have no fellowship with them. I don't have anything to do with that. But in passing, it says rather reprove them. But in passing, can you talk to a lost person? Yeah. You can talk to them. You can ask them how they're doing. Right. Now, the mistakes, like I said, the mistake that people are making here, the next part of the study, the mistakes Christians are making, when they read that verse, they're saying, all that means is, is that we're not supposed to have fellowship with, with the lost world. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, like I said, there's a difference between fellowship, true biblical fellowship, and having to live peaceably with the lost world. And that's the mistake people are making. Those verses are not talking about preaching the gospel when it says rendering evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. It's talking about how you treat the lost world. Don't let them try to pull you back down into the world, the ways of the world. Be separate. Do good. Do what is right. 2 Corinthians 6.14 2 Corinthians 6.14 we read, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteous with unrighteous? Notice it said fellowship. It didn't say that we couldn't talk to the lost world. It said fellowship. I don't hang out with the lost world just to hang out with the lost world. But there's going to be times in your life where you have to work with the lost world. Whether it be a job, where you have to interact with the lost world. I go for walks. A uh, neighbor calls and says, hey, I need help with this or I need help with that. I go over and help them. Okay. There's times you're going to have to interact with the lost world. This is not talking about that. This is talking about actual fellowship. I don't pray with the lost world. Their prayers don't get heard. Mine do. I don't pray with the lost I pray for the lost world, but you don't pray with the lost world. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? You don't pray with the lost world. You don't do Bible studies with lost people. Okay? You don't try to clean up a lost person's life before they get saved. Someone who's saved, you're going to try to help them with their sanctification. Point out something that the Bible says, what's, what you're doing there is wrong. Okay? Exhort the brethren to encourage him to stay on that straight and narrow path. Okay? You don't do that to the lost world. This is talking about fellowship. And what communion hath light with darkness? You know, um, communion in the Bible, it's just for you to look at your life and reflect on your life to say, hey, am I living right? Jesus died. Death, that's why the bread is the body, is an example of the body, and the grape juice is the example of the blood. Jesus died to pay for my sins. Am I still, not, if I, am I still holding on to sins in my life and not giving them to the Lord? Am I living right? That's what communion is. You don't do that with the lost world. That's something you do in fellowship among the brethren. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? You know how many times when I was newly saved that I got suckered into debates and arguments with, about the Bible and different topics of the Bible with lost people? When you find out that you're dealing with a lost person, brother says Christ, you link the gospel message to them. It goes all you go straight back to the gospel, and you don't talk to them about anything else except the gospel. I've had lost people get really mad at me in the comment section because I start out trying to talk to them, and I try to treat them. They say they're a brother in Christ, so I try to treat them like a brother in Christ. I try to point them to the book as the final authority, and they'll slip up and say something like uh, baptism is a requirement for salvation, or. Repentance is just unbelief to belief, or uh, the King James Bible is not God's perfect written word, 
And so there's all these signs that they'll say something that shows that that person ain't saved. They're lost. They're on their way to hell. What do I do? I just link the gospel message and I stop debating them. Uh, I'm not trying to debate them, but I've realized it's a debate with a lost person and an argument. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to do that. Here's the gospel. I'm done. Here's the gospel. I'm done. And that upsets them so much, brothers says Christ. I'm serious. I don't purposely want to upset them, but you really want to upset someone that professes to be a Christian that's a false convert, link the gospel message to them. If someone linked the true gospel message to me thinking that I was a false convert and they linked the true gospel message to me, I'd, I'd listen to it and I'd say, praise the Lord. I wouldn't get all upset and bent out of shame. But the lost world does. Verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Remember, your body is a temple with the Holy Ghost. Okay? You're not supposed to render evil for evil. You're not supposed to be a partaker of that evil. We are supposed to be set apart, absolutely. But what I'm saying here is, is there's a difference between fellowship and you having to deal with the lost, having communications with lost people, conversations with lost people, okay? having to deal with lost people. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Are we supposed to be separate from them? Like I said, do I go to hang out with my lost neighbors? Like party time and social hour and fun time? No, I don't. I don't. That's what this is talking about. I'm separate. I'm sorry. The way you're living your life, I can't have any part in that. Those things that you, those evil, sinful, wicked things that you partake in, I can't have anything to do with it. And I tell them, I reprove them, and say those things are wicked in God's eyes. I can't have nothing to do with it. But what do we read over there? If they're hungry, feed them. If they need something, if they need help with something, lend them a hand. Give them help. I've, I've helped my neighbors move furniture. I've, I've house sit for some of the neighbors that had to, that went on a trip for a week or two. I was a house person, house sit, <laughs> you know. Uh, I had neighbors that have animals, pets, that I, I watched pets for them. Okay? Because they, they take off. I help out. I try to show them that God doesn't hate them. Okay, God's wrath and God's anger is upon them. But I'm talking about, I show them that there's a way to find God's love. God's love is there. It might seem like God is just nothing but hate, but hate in, in the lost world, but God's love is there. Right? I'm only able to be, the way I love you is only possible because of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be alive into the world. How you talk to them and how you treat them physically is going to have a big impact of how you're going to, if, if opening a door for you to reach them for Jesus Christ. Right. But fellowship, we're not to have any fellowship with them. We're not supposed to um, be hanging out and indulging in evil and sin and wickedness with the lost world. You say, I have a job that's very wicked. Pray for another job. God will open doors. Brother says Christ, God will open doors. He's opened doors for me. He will open doors for you. The power of prayer. Ask the brethren for prayer. The power of prayer. Always make sure you go to God yourself. Romans 12.1. Turn to Romans 12.1. Make sure you go to God yourself first and make your request be known unto God yourself. You're always supposed to go to God yourself first before you ask someone else to pray for you. Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Absolutely. We're not supposed to conform to this world. We're not to love this world. We're supposed to be separate from this world. Absolutely. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove whether is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. How can you prove that to the lost world if you try to say, I have to have nothing to do with the lost world? I can't talk to them. I can't 
look at them. I can't have anything to do with them. You prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is by not conforming to the world. And you still have to talk to people. Brethren, when you're at work, they're having a hard time at work, you're, to be, you're being a light to them. And, they're, and, and if they reject Jesus Christ so much, their job, because they're not, now they're ministries of Satan, their job now is to try to pull you away from your walk with the Lord and try to get you to act the way that they act. Don't fall into that trap. Continue to render uh, good. Their, their evil that they're doing to you, re return it with good. Be nice. Be kind. Be respectful. Be peaceful. Don't lose your temper. Don't start calling them names because they're calling you names. Right. Be very careful. The mistake that people make is they think, well, I'm not allowed to fellowship with them. You're right. You're not to fellowship with the lost world. But you can talk to them. See, the deception is fellowship is just us talking and about the worldly things and hanging out like at the Bible buildings, talking about sports, talking about our jobs, talking about movies and, and, and everything and the, the latest fashions and styles of clothing. That's fellowship. No, it isn't. That is not fellowship. True fellowship, the Bible, like I said, praying together, holding each other accountable to the Word of God, doing Bible studies together, uh, quoting the scriptures to each other, exhorting one another. That's true fellowship. Be not conformed to this world. That's the whole thing that my warning is to the brothers and sisters of Christ. When they come at you and they're being mean to you, and they reject the gospel, and they spit in your face, and they kick dirt on you, they try to get you kicked off YouTube, they try to get you, uh, send you hate mail, whatever. You're not to respond the way that they, they are responding to you. You're not to be conformed to this world. The old man is dead and buried. Don't let them get you to resurrect the old man. First John, John 2.15 1 John 2.15 Love not the world. Okay? There's brethren, brother says Christ, we're quick before we get into it any further. There's brethren out there, and you know who you are. You've gotten comfortable with this world. Brothers and sisters of Christ, you're having a hard time at work. Amen. Why? Because you're not supposed to be comfortable in this world. Love not the world. This is not our home. I used to say it's our home away from home, but this isn't our home, period. Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. Our home is in heaven. This is not our home. We're not supposed to be comfortable here. There's brethren, though, that have gotten comfortable here. They have a nice life here. And they stop looking for our home, that home in, in heaven. And they just look at the home that we have here. Brothers and sisters Christ, whether your neighbors had bad neighbors, whether you have bad co-workers, whether you have bad family members that they don't just reject Jesus Christ, but they really hound you and give you a hard time. Okay? It's God's way. He allows it to happen. Why? Because it's God's way to remind you that this is not your home. Remember God's precious promises. We're going to have a new body, and we've got a new, we've got our real home waiting for us. God, Jesus is up there preparing that place for us. Love not the world, neither things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's also a mark of a false convert. When you have someone who loves the ways of the world, culture, traditions, of, which is traditions of men, rudiments of the world, when they start to love that, or not start to, if, they never, if they've loved that more than the Word of God from day one, they're a false convert. But as brothers in Christ, you can fall away from the Lord and start falling back into loving the world. And the love of God that's in you is not shining like it should. You're looking like the world, acting like the world. You're not supposed to. God's love is supposed to shine through you. For all that is in the world, the lusts of the flesh. That's the world's way. Culture. I'm going to keep bringing this up. Brother. They like to use the word, they're, they're on the drugs. Lately, among the body of Christ, it just seems like some of the pastors, it's like a drug. Culture is a drug, and they don't care who they have to kill, who they betray, or who they walk on, or whatever. Their walk, they don't care about their walk with the Lord. It's just its a drug, okay? For all that is in the world, 
the ways of the world, traditions of men, rudiments of the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Right now I'm dealing with a brother in Christ that's a mentor and he has such pride. He has such pride and an ego. It's not of the Father, but is of this world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are not to fall back into the world. When you fellowship with saved sinners, one of our biggest goals of all the brothers and sisters in Christ is to encourage, exhort the brethren to continue to live for Jesus Christ and to stay on that straight and narrow path, to be separate from the world. We're a new creature. That's the real world. This is the world we, that we're looking forward to, if you want to look at it that way with this poster. This is the world we want to look, that we're looking forward to. That's the real world, condition of the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Why would you defend the world? There's brethren out there that are defending the world. Why would you? They've gotten comfortable here. They've gotten comfortable with this over here. I don't know how you get comfortable with that over there, but they've gotten comfortable. And no matter how, even in my best day, I have to remind myself, this is not my home. My home is in heaven. I don't get comfortable here. Right? And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Remember, when you're doing, the, we're not to fellowship with the lost world, brothers and Christ, we're not. But you're to do good to the lost world. Okay, you're to heap coals of fire on them and remind them that what their destination is. You try to remind them what the real world looks like, what the real world is. Wickedness, sin, falling apart. It doesn't last forever. You want everlasting life? You go through Jesus Christ. God has given me everlasting life. Well, my house was burning down. Why are you so peaceful and joyful? Because this isn't my home. I mean, it wasn't burning down. It could have burnt down when I had the forest fire that came through here. It could have burnt down. But this isn't my home. If I have to live out of the truck, my truck, and I lose this house, that truck ain't my home. Okay? Don't get comfortable down here. Don't reward evil for evil. How do we react to the lost world that reject the gospel? You still be kind to them. You still do good to them. But, but, but they're mean to me and they're spitting me on me in the face. It's almost like, like, almost like, you're trying to, like God's trying to talk to us as children because he tells us the children of God. And, he, and we're like children. But he's mean to me. And, and, and because he's mean to me, i got to be mean back. And God's like, trying to, that's like talking to me when I was a kid and wouldn't listen. You don't treat someone evil just because they treat you evil. You don't reward evil for evil. Okay, you 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 overcome evil with good, brothers and sisters in Christ. You overcome evil with good. And yes, there's going to be a lot of times that people are going to spit in your face. I had one of my neighbors got so mad at me once that he was on my deck yelling at me to the point where it's like spit was flying in my face. And if I acted the same way he did, we probably would have gotten into a big fight, a physical altercation. But praise the Lord, nothing that I did, but praise the Lord, he, kept, he gave me peace, he gave me joy, I was able to calm the men down, I apologized to him. Because at the time, it's a whole other story, it's when I had my ex-wife here. I had to apologize to him for her behavior, and I asked him to leave. And he left because I kept my calm and I treated him with respect. I treated him with respect. Now when I pass him on the street, we still talk sometimes. I don't hate him. I don't hold a grudge. I don't get bitterness in my heart towards him. I try. He's really burnt out on Catholicism. He hates Catholicism. He thinks all Christians are Catholicism, Catholics. And it's hard to reach that man. It's very hard to reach that man for Jesus Christ. He's got a lot of hate and anger and bitterness in, in his heart. I mean, but when they spit at you and everything because you're a Christian, what is your reaction supposed to be like? I need to remind you, brothers, just how are we supposed to act when we're persecuted? Acts 5.40. Let's look at some examples of the brethren. Acts 5.40.
This is my big lettering Bible, so sometimes I can turn three pages for one chapter. My giant print Bible. Acts 5, verse 40. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beat them, this is, if you keep reading the whole context of this, they were preaching the gospel, they were living for Jesus Christ, and they were preaching Jesus Christ, and they were imprisoned for doing that. And then they were told that, you know, if this work be of man, it will come to naught. So we don't have to kill them. It's just if it's to be the work of men, it'll come to naught. And they're like, okay, we'll let them go. But it, when they agreed that they're not going to kill them, when they had called the apostles, beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now, what I'm seeing among the brethren in the body of Christ, brothers and sisters Christ, is a lot of people start whining. They start complaining when this happens, when they start facing suffering for Jesus Christ and persecution for the life living for Jesus Christ and standing for His word whether it's at the work, in a workplace environment, uh, home environment, family, neighbors, whatever. If you have to suffer for Jesus Christ, a lot of you guys are starting to whine and complain. I'm sorry, I'm just going to put it right in front of your face. You're starting to whine and complain. You start getting angry. You start getting bitter. Is that how we're supposed to react? Let's keep reading. Verse 41. And they departed from the presence of of the council rejoicing, not whining, not complaining, not holding bitterness in their heart, not saying that you beat us, you guys, we need to go beat them because they beat us. No. They left rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. And Daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ after they were told not to do it. When the lost world frowns on how you're living for Jesus Christ, and you go through a, a situation where you get persecuted for Jesus Christ and His Word, and living for Jesus Christ, what are you supposed to do? The right attitude to have, brothers and Christ, is to give God glory. Rejoice that you're kind of worthy to suffer for His name's sake and for His Word, and you get back to living for the Lord every day. You get back to preaching the gospel. You don't stop. No matter what persecution comes your way, you don't stop living for Jesus Christ every day. You don't stop being part of the ministry of reconciliation. Acts 16.16 16. And some of the brethren are forgetting that. Acts 16.16 16. And it comes to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her master much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show, us, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. Now stop, something, just a little side note. The devils... No sal true salvation. Okay. Just want to throw that in there. Because someone say, well, the devils could get saved. They, they, they will not get saved. Satan will not get saved. They know the way of salvation, and they've rejected it a long time ago. Okay. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. And when her master Saul that the hope of their gains were gone, money, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them into the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Brothers and Christ, when you're a light to the world, you're going to wind up troubling your city that you're in. Because you're a light unto the world. You're separate from them. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go through some persecutions, some hard times for the Lord. Verse 21. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. 
who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Here comes this woman that's possessed with the devil, and I believe there's Jews present. I know that say, well, it's, well, you know, it's it's in Rome, it's in Rome. So they're saying being Romans and everything, but there's Jews present, and the like I said, that's the signs. The Jews require a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom, but they're. They cast this devil out. They're preaching Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, and they get thrown. They get beaten many stripes, beaten hard. Get thrown in prison. They get their feet put in the stocks. They get treated like they're animals and dogs, putting their feet in the stocks. What was their response, brothers and sisters in Christ? Did they get mad? Did they start complaining and whining and getting bitter and? And saying, how dare they treat us like this, and we don't deserve to be treated like this. And uh, Let's see what the reaction was. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. When you're going through some hard times, brother says Christ, it's really good to get on your knees and pray. I have a sign in there that says, when life gets too hard to stand, kneel. And behind the lettering, this big lettering that says prayer. When life gets too hard to stand, kneel. Prayer. They're going through such hard times that they're praying. And saying praise unto God. You mean they're, they're giving God glory for what they're going through? And they're giving God thanks? And they're glorifying God? Yeah. And the prisoners, here's the key here, and the prisoners heard them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're going through hard times, whether it's at work, neighborhood, lost family, whatever, they hear you. You start getting bitter. You start complaining and whining, whispering and backbiting. They hear you. You're setting a bad example for a Christian, for the, bo for the body of Christ, for Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, at the same time, I gave God glory. If I lost this house when the fire came through and I had to go, had to evacuate the area, and I had to go to uh, Gold Beach and everything, they heard me. I was doing Bible studies. I was reading the Bibles. I was singing a few hymns. My attitude was that they heard my attitude to God be the glory. If God wants to take it, He'll take it. My, this isn't my home. They heard them. They heard them in prayer and singing praise to the Lord. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. Remember it says, and the prisoners heard them. Now I'm not trying to add to the word of God, but if the prisoners heard them, the guards heard them. All right. And the keeper of the prison awaked out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Now think about this. Paul and them, that, that guy that puts you in prison, he deserves it. He deserves it. Uh, he deserves it. Let him kill himself, you know. And hey, the doors are open. Let's, just, let's, let's, let's get out of here. We don't deserve this. What's Paul's attitude? An action. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? After everything that we did to you, you're praying, you're singing hymns, you're giving God the glory, you're not spitting in my face, even though we're spitting in your face. I'm not trying, I'm trying about the attitude that they had towards them. We beat you with many stripes, we treated you awful, and here you are trying to save me. You're still trying to save me. And he came in trembling, broken. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the words of the Lord. Repentance towards God, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. They spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and, re 
and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. How was it that Paul was able to be a light to that person? To reach that jailer for Jesus Christ? Because of how he acted. Because of the words he chose to use and how he acted. Singing hymns, praying to God and singing hymns. Not being mean and, and rewarding evil with evil. That's how you lead people to Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul had favor with the guards. If Paul was rude, mean, angry, bitter, vengeful, you think he'd be able to lead that person, that, that guard to Christ? No. Uh, there's other parts in the Bible. Uh, Acts 27.30, I didn't know if I put it down here. Acts 27.39. Acts 27.39. Paul had favor with the guards. Why? Because he was mean and vengeful and spit in their face. And how dare you treat me like this? And how dare you do this? I don't deserve this. Or did he have favor in the God, those eyes because he did what God said. He lived the way God told him to live and God gave him favor in their eyes. Acts 27.39 And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into the which they were, they were minded. This is when Paul is traveling on the boat, and the, he said we shouldn't go because it'll be disastrous, but they don't listen to his, his prophecy. They get on the ship, and they're traveling to Rome, so he can preach the gospel at Rome, and the ship is about to go under. Okay. And to this which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchor, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the main sail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the higher part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers counseled, soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners. Lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, why was he willing to save Paul? God gave him favor in their eyes. Paul didn't reward evil for evil. Kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first in the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Brothers and sisters in Christ, how we react and treat the lost world is very important. And when you're being persecuted for Jesus Christ, or you're having a bad day because you're having to deal with lost people all day, and you're vexed by them and everything, you give God glory for the job. You give God glory for the income. You pray to God to help you get through those times. Right? You sing hymns at work. You pray at work. You go over some scriptures in your head if it's like you're doing physical work. Okay? Deuteronomy 31. Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to turn to all these. We're going to go through them real quick, but you can pause the video. Deut Deuteronomy 31.6, I have to go through, because that was just in my notes. Brother Christ gave me this verse. <laughs> Deuteronomy 31.6. Okay, it says here, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's a precious promise. What you're going through, with how the lost world is, is treating you, Jesus went through far worse. I'm sorry, but nobody's gone through what Jesus went through. And Jesus is going through it with you. You're not alone. Psalm 62, 7, we read, In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. When you're going through hard times, go back to the words of God to get encouragement. Romans 16, 27, we read, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. 
you're going through hard times, remember to give God glory. Thank you, Lord. I'm going through this for a reason. There's times where you can go through hard times because you screwed up, but you still pray to God. You still sing hymns and you say, Lord, forgive me. Help me get whatever I did wrong. If I can correct it, let me correct it. If not, just help me to stay away from it and get me back on the right track. Praise you, O oh Lord, and get back to praising God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Does it glorify God if you're spitting at the guard, <laughs> the Roman soldier, yelling at him, calling him names, wanting to hit him and, and be violent towards him the way they're being violent towards Paul? Peter went through it too. When they were arrested, they, they got arrested. They got put in chains. They're sitting there praising the Lord. Okay? Your actions, whatever you, whatsoever you eat or whatsoever you drink or whatsoever you, thing you do, you do to the glory of God. You are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You're supposed to set the example for the brethren and to the lost world. You can't get away from that. 2 Corinthians 4.15 we read, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many were down to the glory of God. We just saw an example of that with Paul. He had favor in the eyes of the soldiers. He led a soldier to Christ. That held him prisoner. How did he do that? For all things are for your sakes. He went through a hard time and how he reacted to that hard time and that persecution is what helped everything to redound to the glory of God. He gave God the glory. He gave God the praise. He prayed to God. He turned to God. He didn't turn to his bitterness. He didn't turn to his hate. He didn't turn to his anger. He turned to the Lord. If you're going through a hard time, remember that you need to give God the glory. It can get hard sometimes, but you need to remember to give God the glory and turn to God for peace, for joy, and He'll give it to you. Galatians 6.14 but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. The world is crucified unto me. That includes culture. I don't know how many times I can say that. The root, traditions, the Bible word, traditions of men. The rudiments of the world. Okay. The world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Paul's glory when referring to himself is still referring to what Jesus did for him. He's still giving God the glory. Brothers and sisters of Christ, are you giving God the glory no matter what you're going through? The good times, uh, the bad times along with the good. It's easy to give God glory in good times. Are you giving God glory in the bad times? What happened to my daughter? Lord, you know. You know. To God be the glory. There was a reason for it. God knows why. I don't. To God be the glory. I'm yours, Lord. Praise you, O Lord. It's not easy, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm not trying to put myself on a high horse. It is not easy. Especially losing a child. It's not easy. But you still have to give God the glory, even in the bad times, along with the good. The, two, the true test of a Christian Sometimes you can fail that test, but you shouldn't be failing it all the time. I'm here to help you, to exhort you, to lift you back up, brothers, and say, listen, we need to be giving God glory in all things. We need to give Him thanks in all things, okay? Ephesians 1.17 says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. We give God glory in everything. What God has shown me in the Bible, it's all because of the Lord. God's helped me clean up my life, it's all because of the Lord. And in your life, if you're giving God glory in all things, the Father of glory, okay? The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the soul. Jesus Christ is the body, body, soul, and spirit, that's the Godhead. Okay. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation the knowledge of Him. I understand that by being nice and being good and reward, uh, overcoming evil in my life with good, they're trying to push me and trying to get me to do evil, 
by treating me evil. No, I'm not going to reward evil for evil. I'm going to do it with good. I know that's the right way. God has shown me. And I'm sharing it with you, brothers and Christ. All glory goes to God. What he's shown me in the Bible, all glory goes to God. Ephesians 5.20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All things, brothers and sisters Christ, give God thanks in all things. That includes when bad times happen. Your car breaks down. I don't know why it's happening, Lord, but to God be the glory. Praise you, O Lord. Now I need to start praying to figure out what we're going to do next. Lord, what, what, what can I do next? Do, do we have the funds to fix the car? Is it something small? Can it please be something small, Lord? And you start praying. But you've got to remember to give God the glory. It can be frustrating. Oh, why did it break down now? Of all times, it had to break down now. I desperately need to make appointments, and I need to do this. And you start whining and complaining. And you forget to go, wait a second, I need to stop. God, it happened for a reason. Right? The persecution. Why does God allow brethren to be persecuted? So his glory can redound to us, to the lost world. We can be a light. What I mean by that is we can be a light to the lost world and lead people to Christ as Paul did. You're at a, a, a job where there's a lot of lost people there. Continue to live for the Lord and do what's right. They try to invite you out to go drinking. You don't go. And you tell them why. You don't just say, oh, I, I just don't feel like going. You tell them why. I'm sorry, but drunkenness is a sin. And I am a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, and I love my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, and He loves me, and He's commanded me. I'm not, I'm not supposed to get drunk. I'm not supposed to have anything to do with satanic-style music. Okay, you guys want to go out uh, seeking fornication, you know. When I was in the military, they liked to go to the topless bars. Okay, uh, no, I will have nothing to do with that. You tell them why. You don't. The coward part is when you just say, "Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe some other time, but not not this time." And that, that's being a coward. No, you tell them I can't do that, and you tell them why. It would I would not please my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Turn to Second Corinthians four. We're going to end this Second Corinthians four. This conclusion. Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four eight. Second Corinthians four eight. We are troubled on every side. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when you walk away from this study, remember that how we to treat the lost world, we're to be good to them. How are we supposed to react when they treat us bad? We're supposed to respond with goodness, treating them right. And we're supposed to give God glory in all things. Okay? How we react to the lost world and how we talk to the lost world means a lot to the Lord. It's in His Word. But this is what the Lord also understands right here. Verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Why? Because we have Jesus in us. That Holy Spirit. We've got precious promises that are getting us going, looking for that blessed hope. Living for Jesus every day. He gives us peace. He gives us hope. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Perplexed, but don't fall into despair. Some brethren in ministry have. They've gotten very despair, and they just start getting despairful, and they start getting angry and bitter, and they just start going off on tangents and start yelling at the camera and everything, and they're yelling at the lost world and everything. Uh, we're not supposed to be doing that. Rebuke the lost world, absolutely. But we start falling into despair. We're not supposed to do that, brothers and sisters. Persecuted, but not forsaking. Jesus is with you. Remember, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Cast down, but not destroyed. They can try to kill this body of flesh, but they can't destroy my soul. Only Jesus Christ has the power to destroy souls, constant destruction for all eternity in hell. Only Jesus Christ has that authority. Okay? But not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus whether it has to do with persecution or putting, fighting the old man, making sure the old man stays dead and buried, putting this flesh down, dying of the Lord Jesus, 
that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. You know why we die for Jesus Christ? Well, we die because He's our Lord and Savior. But we also die for Jesus Christ because it's a sign to the world. That man, he didn't spit at us, he didn't yell at us, and they walked him up there, uh, tied him to the stake, and they burnt him to death. And all he could do was keep telling us how much Jesus loves us and wants us to get saved, past tense loved us, and wants us to get saved. But God wants us to be saved. He's provided a way for us to get saved. He just wants to see us get saved. He didn't spit at us. He didn't cuss us, curse us, mock us, sarcasm. No. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. You might fight, you might find persecution to the level where you might end up having to actually physically die for Jesus Christ and his word. You might have to. But we have that blessed hope. God will raise us up again. We'll have our incorruptible bodies someday. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. There we got the whole verse. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. One of the first songs when I was newly saved and going through some trouble where I'd made some bad decisions and was really struggling with the flesh and the world, one of the, the songs that I had memorized there for a long time was the old hymn, Day by Day. Day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. And it keeps going. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a good song to get memorized. If you're really having that hard a time at work dealing with lost people, that's a good hymn to have memorized. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, Gives unto each day what he deems best. Loving it's part of pain and pleasure. Mingling toil with peace and rest. Loving the lost world and loving brothers and sisters in Christ, loving family members, it's part of pain and pleasure. Okay? It's not easy. There are times where it's going to be easy, but there's times it's not easy. We are renewed day by day. The inward man is renewed day by day, brothers and sisters of Christ. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatever you're going through when it comes to persecution, brothers and sisters of Christ, remember that blessed hope. God's got a place prepared for us. We won't have to deal with this body someday. We'll have a new body. We'll have a new home. We'll be surrounded by nothing but brothers and sisters in Christ. You won't have to deal with the lost world forever. These afflictions, light afflictions, are but for a moment, blink of an eye, compared to all of eternity. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Heaven. Like I said, some people are getting too focused, some of the brethren are getting too focused on what's going on down here. The things which are not seen. People are getting too comfortable here. Be careful with that. You're not supposed to get too comfortable down here. This is not my home. My desire is to be with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to be with the brethren where it's just brethren. We don't have to deal with the lost world anymore. There's no separation, like we're all scattered throughout the whole world. We get to be together someday, the whole body of Christ. I'm looking forward to that day. That the things which are not seen, heaven, 
And the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Brother Jesus Christ, eternal. That's a good comfort. I pray that's a good comfort for you, Brother Jesus Christ. Get that hymn memorized day by day. And like I said, when you start going through hard times, keep telling yourself and reminding yourself, memorize scriptures, that, that blessed hope. They that which remain shall be caught up, okay? But they shall be changed in a moment, a twinkle in an eye. This corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. That's a precious promise from the Lord. God, Jesus says, I will go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back to receive you. He's coming back to get us. He's not leaving us hanging in the wind, brothers and Christ. He's either going to call us home in death, or he's going to call us home in the catching away of the body of Christ. But every day we're to live as if we could get called home any day now. Any day now. And there's brethren out there that aren't living like that anymore. We forget and we take our eyes off Jesus Christ. I always bring back the story of Peter walking on the Jesus is walking on water and Peter says, let me come out to you. And he does great at first. Why? Because he's got his eyes on Jesus Christ. When does he fail? When he takes his eyes off Jesus Christ. What, when do brethren fail? When you take your eyes off Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters of Christ, no matter what kind of persecution you're going through, or how you, the, the jobs of having to deal with the lost world, don't forget what God has in store for you. Don't forget the power of prayer. Colossians 3.1 Colossians 3.1 Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Remember, it said the things that aren't seen? Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Right now, the biggest thing that I'm fighting right now is uh, Brother Christ has turned his back on the Word of God and he's not setting his affection on things on, on above. But on things on the earth, he's becoming addicted to culture. You know, traditions of men, rudiments of the world. He's seeing culture everywhere in the Bible. God's for culture. God's for culture. And he's seeing it everywhere in the Bible. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be careful. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary the devil, go around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That includes for Christians. He can cause Christians to fall away. You, it's your, your choice. But there are Christians that are truly saved, born again, that used to stand for the Lord, doing great work for the Lord, and now they're falling away. Why? Because they're not seeking those things which are above anymore. They're getting so distracted by what's going on here on this earth that they've forgotten their final destination. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, incordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Video games is, is idolatry. It becomes a false god because I've, I've talked to brethren. Some I believe are saved. Some I believe are false converts. But I've talked to some brethren, and they have a hard time letting go of the video games. Why? Because it's covetousness, which is idolatry. Same thing goes for holidays. It's covetousness, which is idolatry. Same thing goes if you're choosing uh, getting drunk. Hollywood movies and TV shows. Cussing. All this stuff that you are addicted to, and you love doing it, and you become covetousness, it can become idolatry. Okay? Because you don't care what God says anymore. You're your own God to say what's right and wrong. Verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. When God, when God goes to, the, to pour out his wrath on the lost world today, fallout, <laughs> uh, chastening will fall on the brethren who are not separate from the world. I want to put that in there because right now, it's going to be a whole other study, but I put this in as notes in parentheses. When God goes to pour out his wrath on the lost world today, if you are not separate from the lost world, be separate 
then God might allow you to go through some chastening, go through some of the hard times and some of the fallout, because you're not separating yourself from the lost world. Okay? God will not pour out His wrath on the righteous along with the wicked. It's chastening for us that God punishes us. It's not His wrath, it's His love. He loves us enough to chasten us, to get us back on the right path, the right track, to get us all back on the same page. Okay? His wrath is reserved for the wicked, the lost world, those who reject Jesus Christ. Verse 7, In the which ye also walk, in the which ye also walked sometime when you lived in them, the old man. But now, now, the changed life, the new creature in Christ, ye, ye also put off all these things, anger, you put off the anger. I see a lot of anger in brethren, in, in ministry, and every and everything. It says, put off all these things. Anger. There's nothing wrong with righteous anger, brother says Christ, but we did a study on this. You've got to give it to the Lord eventually. In the moment, if you have righteous anger, you have righteous anger. But you need to learn to give that to the Lord and not hold on to those things. You put them off. Okay? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man which, and man with his deeds. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You don't reward evil for evil. They lied to me, so I'm going to lie to them. Okay. This is a whole other story because... In the Old Testament, it talks about how the, um, in, in Egypt, the midwives lied to Pharaoh and God rewarded them because they feared God over fearing Pharaoh. There might be some times where you might have to lie to the lost world. This Bible becomes outlawed. And I have Bibles hidden. I say I have Bibles hidden in the house places. And they come here and say, do you have any King James Bibles there? I'm going to tell them no. And God will reward me for it. But if I'm lying to them just to reward evil with evil then God's going to hold me accountable. That's not why I do it. I do it because I fear the Lord and I love His Word. That's why I would lie to them. But you don't reward evil with evil. That's what this is taught about. Lie not one to another among the body of Christ. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. See, that's why we know it's the body of Christ. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Someone got stuck on this word, barbarian. Oh, I'm going to take it. Uh, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. In other words, you're not a barbarian when you get saved. You're not a Jew when you get saved. You're not a Greek when you get saved. You are a, what the lost world called as Christians, but you're a Bible-believing, God-fearing brother and sister in Christ. We are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're the body of Christ. Okay? The house of God today is the church of the living God. That term, church of the living God, is a description of what the house of the Lord is today. It's not a title. Be careful. It's a description on what the, uh, what the house of God is today. It's the brethren. You, brother, sister Christ, and me, our bodies are temple of the Holy Ghost. We make up the house of God today. You know I mean? But Christ is all and in all. I'm not a barbarian anymore. I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. If you were a Jew and you got saved, you're not a Jew anymore. You're a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman. Same thing with a Greek. Same thing with all this stuff. Bond or free. You're now a servant of Jesus Christ first and foremost. Right here. And you start living a life of Christ. Twelve. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy to change life. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. We're to forgive one another. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You can go through the hardest time you, you want. I mean, not you want, but you go through the hardest time, persecution. There was a time in the Bible where Paul was talking about they despaired of life and death. That's how bad it was. But God got them through. 
And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. God gave him peace. Okay. Looking for that blessed hope gave him peace and, pe and the brethren praying for him. Got him through it. Okay. To the which also ye are called in one body, one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with, with the grace in, in your hearts to the Lord. The best way to put out despair, all these things of going through persecution, is singing praise to the Lord. Prayer and singing hymns. Verse 17, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Brothers and sisters of Christ, it is so important that we don't lose focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, understanding the precious promises, the blessed hope, and that as we live for Jesus Christ every day, brothers and sisters of Christ, it's going to reflect the lost world. It's going to redound to the lost world. And they're going to see it. Colossians 3.23. Jump down to 3.23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as for the Lord, as to the Lord. As to the Lord. I gotta say that right. I'm supposed to treat you the way I treat Jesus Christ. Brothers and Christ. And not unto men. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto men. Traditions of men, be gone. Culture, be gone. I'm living for Jesus Christ every day. Video games, Hollywood movies, TV shows, gone. The, lo the lost world, for this, what we're talking about here, the lost world, no matter how much they treat me, I'm going to treat them right. No matter how bad they treat me, I'm going to do right by them. You're to help the lost and the saved for the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a priority. I always tell people there's a priority. There's God first. God first, I know that's hard for some of the married men out there, God first, and married women, God first, then your saved husband, saved wife, second, then your children until they get to the age of accountability, and then brothers and sisters in Christ, then the lost world, it's in that order. So God first, saved husband or wife, okay? if you have children under the age of, of accountability, they come next. Then the saved brothers and sisters in Christ, then the lost world. Okay. But you're still supposed to help both lost and saved. You're supposed to love all those groups that I said. And you're supposed to do right by them according to the word of the Lord and live right according to the word of the Lord. Verse 24, knowing that, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. There's no respect of persons. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You don't have to turn here, but Romans 14, 10 says, But why, but why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall account of himself to God. I don't bear any hatred or malice towards any of my brothers in Christ that have turned on me. I give them to the Lord. God will deal with them. Just as God's dealing with me, God will deal with them. Uh, Brother Brian, God will deal with them. Okay, I've got to show where he's wrong and he's misleading the brethren and he's leading the brethren down the wrong path. I will. And I pray someone does that to me. If I'm going down the wrong path and I'm misleading the brethren and going down the wrong path, why am I not getting bitter about it? Why am I not getting super angry and hatred and everything? A, I'm not supposed to. And B, God will sell things at the judgment seat of Christ. I'll have to answer for where I did wrong and what I did wrong, where I went wrong and what I did wrong. And Brian's going to answer for the same thing. Where he went wrong by the body of Christ, by the word of God, and with his walk in the Lord, he's going to have to answer for it. 
Okay? Every knee shall bow. That's for the saved. Why, why do we not get so bent out of shape with the saved? Because that's for the saved. So there's times I want to get bent out of shape. There's times I go for a walk getting frustrated, you know, being attacked by a brother in Christ, you know, a mentor that's doing, it's like he's doing a campaign, like he's running for president or something, and he's trying to destroy all other people, you know, and it's like I get frustrated, but you give them to the Lord. God will deal with them. God will deal with them. What about the lost world, persecution, everything you think? You give them to the Lord. Remember what the Bible says, every knee shall bow, Revelation, Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the book according to the, their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and death and hell were delivered up, the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. You can either go through Jesus Christ or you can go through the Levitical laws. You can't do both. The lost world that rejects Jesus Christ is going to wind up at the great white throne and they're going to have to answer for everything. And they're going to be held accountable to the Levitical laws, God's laws. Do how, how do they match up? Are they perfect? No, they go to hell. Did they break one of them? Well, they broke more than one of them. They go to hell. They get tossed in the lake of fire. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't take it so personally that you think that you've got to do avenge yourself or... or God will deal with everything in the end. You see the lost world, you think they're living it up now and they're having great times. Uh, that's nothing compared to burning in, in the lake of fire for all eternity. Let them have their good time now. Give them to the Lord. God will deal with them. Brothers and sisters in Christ that fall away and they refuse to take correction. They're above accountability. They're above correction. Give them to the Lord. God will deal with them at the judgment seat of Christ. Give it to God. You want to know how to find real peace and joy that God gives the brothers and sisters in Christ when you give things to the Lord. Say, Lord, there's nothing I can do. I give them to you. And it's like that burdens were lifted. That burden gets lifted. Lord, I give them to you. All right. There's another hymn that says, this is uh, the story. Uh, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Patiently waiting, looking above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. What is it? This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Brothers and sisters in Christ, is that your story? With whatever you're going through, with the lost world trying to persecute you, having to deal with, I know we kind of threw the brethren that are falling away, but if they start falling away and acting like the lost world, then you put them without so God can deal with them. But the point is, is the lost world's coming and they're, they're going to do everything they can to, to break your spirit, to get you to turn on the Lord, to get you to reward evil with evil, to get you to be bitter, angry, hateful, spiteful. Okay, to get you to fall back into sin, to do it, the, the, regardless. What is your story, brothers and sisters of Christ? What is the testimony that you're leaving behind? Is your testimony that every day you praise the Lord with the life that you're living? Every day. Did, I did my best every day to please the Lord. And when I failed the Lord, God's grace and God's mercy was so great that He picked me back up, He put me back together, and got me back on the, on the path that, so that that next day I was back to praising the Lord every day. Is that your story, brother, sister Christ? Is that your testimony? 
I pray it is. And when you walk away from these studies, brothers, I just hope you understand that how we react to the lost world, we're to preach the gospel with all our heart. Okay? Um, we're supposed to go through all the tiles again. We're supposed to be ministries of reconciliation. People who reject the true gospel, how do we treat them? We're still supposed to be good to them. Well, they reject the gospel, now we're to spit on them and treat them like they're, they're just garbage. No, you still do right by them. Okay? And the mistakes Christians are making, they're mistaking doing right by the lost world with fellowship. You're not supposed to fellowship with the lost world. You're not supposed to indulge in sin with the lost world. Absolutely not. Okay? But you can still be there to talk to the lost world. To witness for Jesus Christ. You're to be a living sacrifice. Your life is supposed to be a light unto the world. How you live and everything. And if you have such a hard time, remember, Brother Christ, the hymns, hymns, the good old hymns. Day by day is a good hymn for hard times. It's a great hymn for hard times. Uh, when you start forgetting to praise the Lord, remember that story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising the Lord all the day long. To remind yourself to, I need to be praising the Lord every day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No matter what I'm going through, mainly for this study, for persecution from the lost world, or pressure from the lost world, pressure from false brethren, pressure from uh, brethren that have fallen, and you're doing your best to stay to the Word of God, um, praise the Lord. To God be the glory. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray this has exhorted you and encouraged you, brother, sister Christ, to stay strong, to stay, keep standing, and keep living for Jesus Christ every day, no matter how the lost world treats you. Okay? Keep giving God praise. Keep giving God glory. Keep living for the Lord every day. Okay? So I will see you in the next video.